You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to the latest episode of the Command Zone. I'm your host, Josh Lee Kwai, and I'm here with a very special guest. I'm here with Adam Savadan from Loading Ready Run. Hi, friends. How you doing? So if you follow us on Twitter or our social media, you probably know that Adam is going to be a guest on the next episode of Game Nights. And we haven't really talked about it on the show yet, but we're going to be playing with the new legendary creatures from Guilds of Ravnica. Yeah. Adam, who did you build your deck around? Uh, I built my deck around Izoni the Thousand-Eyed. Yeah, so a Golgari tokeny graveyard graveyard kind of deck yeah, yeah with a sack outlet tied in yeah. sounds right up your alley <laughs> yeah it's very much is yes <laughs> i'm very excited so we're going to be breaking down adam's deck and we don't do this very often this is going to be before that episode comes out so you're going to know sort of more about adam's deck when watching game nights than you will about the rest of us probably yes which is cool. I yeah. wish I was doing my deck so they could be rooting for me because I feel like now <laughs> they're going to be rooting for you. Before we get into all of that, we got to give a big shout out to our sponsor. It's Card Kingdom. You know, Adam, Loading Ready Run is also sponsored by Card Kingdom. Sure are. Yes. So you have a lot of experience with them. They're very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Like every time uh, we get feedback, they it is exactly, I can't believe they were so fast. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly. We get tweeted yeah. that constantly. Like, I yeah. ordered this on Monday. It shipped out 15 minutes after I ordered it, and it's Tuesday, and it's already here or whatever. Yeah. Card Kingdom is the fastest shipping in the business. And if you use our affiliate link when you order cards, magic products, singles, anything at all, you really are supporting Command Zone and Game Nights. That affiliate link is cardkingdom.com slash command zone. So we appreciate everybody that, that does that. And something else that is of very high value and pretty cool, and you're probably going to want to get your hands on, especially for this set, because they've done the play mats with all the new Shockland art on it. In fact, yeah. you have the Golgari one in front of you. There's a lot of cards on it. It's but very nice. It's pretty sweet. It's Ultra Pro. It's stuff by Ultra Pro. We're talking sleeves. Oh, the new sleeves. Holy crap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The, the new the, sleeves that have the, the guild on symbol yeah. on it. Oh, They're in so fact, rad. we've got it right here. This is the yeah. Golgari one because he play. he's playing the Golgari deck. But they have the sleeves for every guild. So if you have an Azorius deck or a Rakdos deck, I just love these things. And this is using the new Eclipse technology, meaning that they are very durable. You know, yeah. printed sleeves in the past have been known to sort of split and tear real easily. These ones don't. They last for a very long time. So Ultra Pro always up in their game. I mean, I've obviously been shuffling this deck, and it feels good. Yeah, like it. Yeah, yeah, they still feel great. So yeah. very, very cool. And the final way to support all of our content is directly, if you go to patreon.com slash command zone, you can contribute, and you get to do things like see game nights before anybody else. So yeah. you'll be seeing this uh, deck in action before the general public if you are a patron. And another benefit is we call out one lucky patron every single episode, and this episode is dedicated to... Dustin Nice. Dustin, you rock. Okay, before we get into the main topic, Adam, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you, your involvement with the Magic community. Okay. You know, what you do. You do a lot of content. Yeah, uh, it's just started recently. I mean, it's about, I'm about four months in of, like, full-time content creation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you've I, been involved with Loading Ready Run and for, streaming oh, and yeah, stuff for yeah, a yeah, few yeah. years But now. not like I haven't dedicated you, you, to it. You did right. I you dove, dove right in full time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I do work with Loading Ready Run, and we do the pre-pre-release, which happens every new set. Oh, yeah. When is the um, Guilds of Ravnica pre-release? It is September 19th. Okay. Um, so I don't know when this episode is coming out exactly. <laughs> the, so if you're listening to this or watching this, it could be either before or after September 19th. Yeah. But if it is before September 19th, you should watch that pre-pre-release on um, Loading Ready Run's YouTube. Oh, sorry, their Twitch channel. Yes. And then it will be posted yes. just on the say. YouTube channel afterwards. And I often, you know, if I can't catch it on the day, we'll watch it later. Yeah. And I'm assuming that you've won the whole thing at this point. <laughs> I have an okay record at them. Yeah, I do pretty the well for myself. One you yeah, I smashed everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it, was just, yeah, it wasn't even remotely close. <laughs> Loading Ready Run does great stuff, and it's another way to get a look at the set uh, in the sealed environment before anybody else. Yeah. Um, sorry, and moving on to your Twitch stuff? Yes, I stream on Twitch uh, 9 a.m. to about 1 or 2 uh, in the afternoon at Pacific Standard Time. So it's at twitch.tv slash cbats, which is S-E-A-B-A-T-S. And that's uh, that time, is that every single day? It's Monday to Friday. Oh, it's yeah. every day Every morning. Week. Every morning of the week, I am there 9 a.m. on the dot. What kind of stuff are you playing? Uh, 
I love roguelikes. So anything that's like high difficulty. So Dark Souls, Bloodborne. Uh, I did all of, I mean, someone, there's someone out there who will understand how hard this was, but I S ranked all of Cuphead. Okay. Which I have is no idea what that incredible. Means. It was very hard. It was, it took you, me a long time. You like to crank up the difficulty yeah, to 11. Like four basically. or five hours on a single level kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I crank it up. Even if the game's not that hard, I'll try to make something. Oh, like stipulation? Yeah. Usually if I'm getting bored. How very loading ready <laughs> run of you. <Yeah. laughs> Stipulations are our thing. So. <laughs> and you might also recognize Adam because uh, recently you've also been on Friday nights. Yes. I'm on Friday nights now. Yeah. So which is very cool. I'm not 100% sure if I'm a regular member yet because I can't say. I don't I don't know. They haven't told me. But I've been in a couple episodes. It's, a lot, it's been a lot of fun to do. And I'm looking forward to doing more. I'm pretty sure you're a regular episode. <laughs> I mean, a regular on the episodes. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, let's get down to business here. Let's talk about this Azoni yeah, thousand-eyed deck. Um, let's read Azoni really quick, just for mm-hmm. those. It's a new card. You may not have heard about it yet. It's two black, black, green, green. That's six mana total. For a two, three elf shaman, uh, it has one of the new mechanics from Guilds of Ravnica on it, which is undergrowth. And it says, when a Zoni thousand-eyed enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 black and green insect token for each creature card in your graveyard. Yeah. So the undergrowth as a mechanic cares about creatures in your graveyard. Yes. And they all have different, all the undergrowth cards have sort of different effects, but it's always like count up the amount of creatures in your graveyard. This one gives you 1-1 tokens for it. But then Azoni also has a second ability, an activated ability. It says, you pay a green and a black, sacrifice another creature, Mm -hmm. and then you gain one life and draw a card. And this is, Azoni doesn't have to tap or anything. So as many times as you have green and black, you can sacrifice one of your creatures, gain a life and draw a card. Presumably you're sacrificing the tokens, but... Yeah, it just synergizes with itself. Like it's just a good card on its own. This has card draw on it, so I already like it. Yeah. And it's doing graveyard shenanigans, which is cool. Yeah. Um... So when you saw this card, you know, generally, what did you think about it? I thought it was awesome. I mean, it's right in the wheelhouse of stuff I want to do. Like, mm-hmm. I love churning through my either even just it lets me sacrifice creatures for value because my commander is always on deck to come and play. And then I get one ones out of it. Mm-hmm. And then I can use those one ones to sacrifice to the commander to draw cards and gain life. Um, I love the like it's a threat just on its own. Mm-hmm. Like It works so well with any kind of pump effect, because if I'm making even Worst case scenario, like if I'm only making two tokens, like I still think that's pretty good. Yeah, and that's really modest, right? Like yeah. likely that's worst case scenario. Yeah. That's like likely is only coming out at some points in the game and making ten plus tokens. Oh, like it's yeah. not that hard to throw creatures no. into your bin. They don't have to die, they can be thrown directly there. Mm-hmm. Um in fact the first category we're gonna talk about of cards in your deck is get stuff in my graveyard. Yeah. So there's a bunch of effects in the deck that really the goal is to just fill the bin with creatures so that it only makes as many insect tokens as possible. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about, we have both Lilianas listed. There are more than two Lilianas, more than two, Adam. Yeah, yes. so which two do we mean? So I'll specify. <laughs> so you can't just say two Lilianas. Like, it doesn't work both, like that. Both of them. Both of them, you know, the, the two best ones. And the, they're not even the two best ones. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't see the two best ones out here. Yeah, so Liliana, uh, Heretical Healer. Oh, right. That takes a little bit of work. That's yeah. the flip one. The flip uh, Planeswalker from... Magic Origins. Right, right. Um, she takes a little bit of work, but there are sack outlets. Obvi- I mean, the commander is a sack outlet, and there are a couple others to help um, get her going. And even if it, even if you just block with like a 1-1 one, one or something, and it dies, it dies, and then you can flip her. Oh, I guess it's not token, sorry. So you just block with one of your value creatures, like Yavimaya, Yavimaya Elder or um, Secure, Secure, Secure Tribe, Tribe Elder. Elder is a yeah. really good one. Yeah. You can play that on turn two, Liliana on turn three, then sack this, yeah. this Steve. That'd be a little bit like you usually want to sack Steve right away, but if you had this in your hand, you would, you would probably, probably do that. Yeah. yeah. So Liliana Heretical Healer, I'm just going to broad strokes in case you don't, aren't aware of what the card is. It's a 2-3 with lifelink, but it says uh, if a creature, non-token creature you control dies, then you f- exile Liliana and return to the battlefield transformed, and you get a 2-2 zombie. Mm-hmm. Transformed on the other side is a Planeswalker, and the Planeswalker has a plus ability that makes everybody to discard a card, a minus ability that reanimates stuff out of your graveyard, and eh, yeah. the ultimate doesn't matter. That's not really what she's doing. Yeah, we're never going to ultimate anyway. Like I would just keep discarding, to be honest. Yeah, so the plus is really interesting here because mm-hmm. you're making everybody discard cards, including yourself. Yes. But 
that's can that's good it's right because you want creatures in your yeah, yard yeah i just yeah. want creatures in my yard and even there's other stuff in the deck that uh really benefits from even creatures being in my yard there's a uh, varals the scar mm-hmm. stripe so he gives every one of my creature cards scavenge so now you can deck. basically sort of use them for value out yeah. of your yard yeah, there's probably a bunch of stuff in here that yeah. like actually wants to be in the graveyard. Yes, there's so, all kinds. Of Liliana works perfectly. What's the second Liliana? Uh, the second Liliana is Liliana Death's Majesty from Amonkhet. Yeah, she's and getting fanned by zombies. Yeah, so she uh, has a plus one that says create a two-two black zombie creature token, and then put the, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Uh, so you make a token and self mill. Yes, and then uh, she has a minus three ability that lets me bring back any creature from my graveyard. Uh, it becomes a zombie in addition to its other types. So both Liliana's not only put things into your art yard, but can get them back out. Yes. So that's great. Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly what this deck wants to do. Mm-hmm. And then I just have, uh, you know, role players like Grizzly Salvage. Yeah, that's a card we haven't talked about a ton on the show. Do you want to read it? Yes. It's a uh, green and a black for an instant, and it's reveal the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature or land card from among, among them into your hand, put the rest into your graveyard. So this is great. You can keep a good, you know, one of the good things that maybe you can cast or something yeah. that's like lower on the curve and then dump the rest into the graveyard for Izoni or for value. I like Grizzly Salvage because it's an instant. Yeah. So it allows you to hold it open and maybe you've got like a removal spell that you might use if they attack you. But if they don't, you then Grizzly Salvage still, you don't waste that mana for the turn. It's that flexibility, right? Yeah, yeah. super you good. Never, you never want to just leave up mana with a removal spell. Like, that's just such a waste of your time. Because if you don't use it, well, then you feel like you have to use it. Yeah, and then you're like, oh, okay, well, everybody's passed. I guess I'll kill that. I just know. so I don't waste the mana for the yeah, turn. Yeah, it feels like, bad. So yeah. it's good to have Excuse multiple me. options. And I also have uh, Grapple with the Past okay. in the deck. And that's one in a green for an instant, again. Um, put the top three cards of your library in your graveyard. Uh, then you may return a creature or land card from your graveyard to your, from your graveyard to your hand. So it's not even the, one of the ones that this mills. It's any of the cards that are in my graveyard. So I get a better selection of what's going on. So if you Death's Majesty, say, yeah. a couple times, and then you Grizzly, or sorry, Grizzly Salvage, and then you grapple with the pass. Like a bigger selection. You have a huge selection of, yeah. you just bring in the best thing or the, or the, when I say best, it could just be the thing that fits the situation right now. Yeah, because there's a lot of situational cards mm-hmm. in this deck. And I, I like having, when I was building it, I wanted selection and resiliency. And that gives me both. And again, an instant which yeah. is so much better than a sorcery on those type of effects. Yeah. Because it feels bad to just do something that only fills your yard unless you get something out of it. Like, or I don't, you're yeah, doing I, it at an instant speed, right? You're, I don't want to have a card that just puts stuff in my graveyard. Right. Yeah. You want to be able, it brings a card back. Or, yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. Westvale Abbey is an interesting yeah. one, too. I didn't really think about this one. It's a land. It taps for diamond or colorless mana. You can pay five and pay a life, and then it will make a 1-1 one, one white and black human cleric token. Or you can pay five and sacrifice five creatures, transform Westvale Abbey, and untap it. And it becomes Ormondal, who's a 9-7 flying indestructible trample, trample life, lifelink. Think, yeah. Something like that. I'm too yeah. lazy to flip the card over right now. Um, <laughs> but it becomes yeah. an unbeatable demon. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty hard to beat. Uh, I wouldn't say unbeatable, uh, no. but yeah. It, there's still things. Cyclonic yeah. Rift still works. Yeah, it still works. Yeah. Like surprise, Rift, surprise. Yeah. Things, yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, you mentioned something which was you can sacrifice non-token creatures to it. And in this deck, you... That helps it. It could be good. It could be just fine to do that because yeah. creature cards in graveyards are something his only wants. Yes. So that because it's like even if I sack a real a, a real creature mm-hmm. to uh, Westfell Abbey, like I mean, grapple from the past, bring something back. Liliana's Death Majesty can just I can play her in minus three. Like it's not the worst, right? And she still has two of loyalty left over. Like she's still on the board and she's still a threat, right? Even with a minus three. So, so yeah, so you're not even that worried. It's not like oh, uh, I get one for one with a creature, or I lose one of my creatures. Yeah. Uh, so many ways to bring it back, not that big a deal. Yeah. Okay, so oh, you've got a couple new cards from guilds here. These sure are do. exciting. Let's yeah. talk about these. I am very excited. This next card this is card's... perfect in this deck. It is absurd. I want to say absurd. <laughs> this card is pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Okay, so it's called Under Realm Lich. It's three black green for a four three. Okay. It's a creature zombie elf shaman construct. <laughs> it's not a construct. <laughs> it's Thopter. Not a construct. Thopter. It's not a yeah. <laughs> servo. So the text reads, if you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library. Then put one into your hand 
and the rest into your graveyard. You so don't have to reveal it. It's so good. I put two Just extra that. cards. Yeah. You don't have to reveal it. Just that. This card is really good, right? Yeah. Just, it goes, so many things. So yeah. it goes, first of all, you're picking the best of one of There's three There's more text, too, yeah. by the way. First of all, you're picking the best of three cards rather than one card. That's yeah. just that's just amazing. It's just awesome. And it's anytime I draw a card. Yeah. So if I draw a card off my commander, I draw three. I look at three. Yeah. If somebody – yeah, exactly. If you play any kind of card draw type spell, for each of those cards, you're drawing three first, picking one and putting – and then putting the other two into the graveyard. That's so much better. These effects almost always say on the bottom of your library. Yeah. Stuff in your graveyard is way more accessible to you than the bottom of the library stuff. So, yeah. and in this deck specifically, it cares about creatures and graveyards. And a lot of these cards, like, do stuff when they're in the graveyard anyway. <laughs> yeah, this card's ridiculous. Yeah. And it, we're not done. We're not done. There's a little bit more. So, there's a second line that says, Pay for life. Underrealm Lich gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. <clears throat> it's hard to kill. It can block. Because the days. first thing I'm thinking is like five Not mana, four, three creature. Yeah. It's a good ability, but it's unlikely to stick around. Except yeah. it protects itself. Yes. Like pretty well. Pretty well. At the low cost of four life. But I my mean, commander gains me life and draws me cards. Four life? <laughs> yeah. Who cares? Yeah. Like, would you, would you pay four life to protect your Ristic study? I mean, that's yeah. kind of like what we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah. That card, that card seems like a must go in all Golgari decks now, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay, and um, oh, this next one's sweet too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just gets better. Okay, so this, well, this is, is a, not better than the last one. No. Yeah, but it's still good. It's still pretty good. So this is another new card. Yep. It's called Doom Whisperer. It's three black black for a 6-6 six, six flying trample. It's a nightmare demon. It's a five mana 6-6 six, six flample. Yep. That's already decent. Not We wouldn't necessarily play that in Commander just because of that. Yeah, I'm a limited head, so I'm like, oh my god, that's unbeatable. Yeah, I'm limited. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. but the second ability is what kind of... it's. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. So the second ability reads, pay two life, surveil two. Surveil two. So surveil is a new mechanic yeah. from Guilds of Ravnica. Also, it's very much like Scry. The way surveil reads is look at the top two cards of your library. That's two because this is Surveil 2. If it was Surveil 1, you'd look at the top card of your library. Yeah. Or Surveil 3, you look at the top three. So Surveil 2, look at the top two cards of your library, then put any number of them into your graveyard and the rest on the top of your library in any order. So it's basically Scry, except yeah. for instead of bottom of library, you can choose to make <laughs> it go into the grave. graveyard. <laughs> it's just like it keeps getting it's better. so good. And it's pay to life. This is Grizzle Brandish. Not as good. Not as good. Yeah. But I mean... Like that's Surveil a good, 2 is a real ability. Grizzlebrand's banned. So if you're being compared to Grizzlebrand, you're pretty good. Grizzlebrand's yeah. also banned because he's legendary. But yeah, Surveil 2 is great. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to, even if they you play it and they go to remove it right away and you're just like, I pay for life and mill four. At least you got some sort of value at it. You don't just yeah. get blown out of the water. And you don't even have to put them in your graveyard. You can just look at two cards, decide yeah. if you want to keep one. And then if not, worst worst case scenario, two cards go in your graveyard. Yeah. And if that's not even bad case in a lot of things. A lot of things you're like, oh, sweet. Now yeah. I'm going to get this. You know, that was this was four cards down. Yeah. I'm going to draw that next turn, and I got two more creature got, cards in my graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. Just like, it keeps yeah. getting better. I really like it. And then I have like two like uh, edge case, I guess, cards getting things in the graveyard. Well, I, I really say. liked how it's interesting that in different decks you'll sort of use cards you wouldn't use in other decks. For, so, for instance, in this case, we talked about how your deck doesn't care so much if you lose creatures. Yeah. So you're way more open to effects that have a cost of sacrificing a creature. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what these are. Yeah. So I'm running El oh, sorry. I'm running Eldritch Evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one green green for a sorcery. Uh, as an additional cost to cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrifice a creature. And then I can search my library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less, where X is two plus the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. Put that card onto the battlefield, shuffle my library, exile Eldritch Evolution. Yeah. Pretty good. So you sack a two drop, you can get a four drop, four drop gets a six drop or less. Uh, yeah, this is a great card. Yeah. This is, and it's only two mana? Three mana. Three mana, okay. That's sorcery speed. Yeah, still good. Still good. I like it. The other one is Diabolic Intent. It's one in a black for a sorcery. It's Diabolic Tutor, but you have to, as an additional cost to cast, or sorry, it's Demonic Tutor, but as an additional cost to cast, you have to sacrifice a creature. So you search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Um, this is borderline, could be in some instances in the deck, better than Demonic Tutor because you kind of get an additional benefit. Yeah. Sometimes 
Sometimes. Not, but sometimes yeah. it could be. And having two demonic tutors in the deck I mean, is not bad. The worst case scenario is you give up a token. Like yeah. A one, one. Yeah. Well, that's not the worst case scenario. But well, you could. Lowest have, return, you yeah, should say. Yeah. <laughs> lowest return scenario. I mean, you might have to once in a while be like, well, I'll sacrifice a real creature here, but I'm going to go get like the best card for me right now. Yeah. Okay. So that was the get stuff in your graveyard category. Now, after you've got stuff in your graveyard, yep. presumably a bunch of creatures in there, you're yep. going to want to cast a Zoni or in some other way, make a bunch of tokens. Yes. That's the next category. Make a bunch of tokens. Yeah. So a Zoni herself, mm. himself? Herself. Herself does this. Uh, count Again, when she comes into play, you count the number of creature cards in your graveyard and you get that many 1-1 one, one insects. Mm-hmm. But good deck building is to have a bunch of things that do the effect you want to do because there's going to be times maybe where maybe you don't have a lot of stuff in your graveyard. Maybe this first part of the plan, it just didn't come together in this game or whatever. Yeah. Or somebody's killed a zone a couple times and she's too expensive. You can't cast her right now, but you still want to make a bunch of tokens. So you have a, a few other token makers in the deck. Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. Um, I'm a huge fan of sapperling migration uh-huh. just because of the flexibility. Yeah. Like if I need it on turn two, that's completely fine and if nobody's like pressuring me which is usually isn't the case in commander <laughs> games but if you're not being pressured um you can hang on to it until turn five right so or turn six sorry go ahead read it yeah so it's one in a green for a sorcery and it has kicker four and kicker means that you can pay it when you're paying the cost for the spell you can add on the kicker um and i create two one one green saproling creature tokens wait and how'd you say that saproling is it saproling yep okay saproling <laughs> What, Maybe that's happen? how they say it in Canada. It might be how they say it in Canada. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. I usually always say sapperling. You knew sapperling. how to say yeah. it because you immediately said, is it? Yeah, it's sapperling. <laughs> Weird. No, oh, man. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. I got nervous. Yeah, I got, maybe. maybe. I freaked out. My brain just misfired. It was like, it's saproling, you moron. And then it's Make like, sure you say it right. Sap- <laughs> saproling. Oh, crap. <laughs> the look on your face. When I, I was like, hold on. We got to stop here. I just want to hear you. I thought we were going to have an argument. You're like, we were like, this is how you say it. But you're immediately like, it's saproling. <laughs> yeah, no, it's saproling. Sorry. Okay. You can, you can, everyone can relax. It's saproling. <laughs> we're back on the rails. We're fine. Yeah, create two one one green saproling creature tokens. If this spell was kicked, create four instead. So for two, you get two. For six mana, you get four. Yes. Yeah. This seems like actually in this instance, something you're going to do for two more often. Yeah, uh, more often than not. Yeah, just to get something out early, get a presence early. Yeah. And then you've got a creature for Liliana to help flip, or you've got some, you know something to work well, with your Liliana doesn't flip off the token. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, so. Something for your Diabolic Intent or mm-hmm. something for, well, we'll talk. Eldritch about. Evolution. Like if I go, yeah. you know, like. Sapperling, I mean, okay. that doesn't really help you. That gets it gets you a two, two drop. drop, which is fine because there's mana ramp in the deck. So it's yeah. like, it's not. Sakura Tribe Elder is a pretty good card to get, honestly. Yeah. So, especially in this deck. Okay. So let's talk about um, this is another card from uh, what was the set called? It's called Dominaria. <laughs> yep. Are you talking about Tender Shoot? Yeah. I'm talking about Slimefoot. Oh, okay. The stowaway. Yeah. He, I mean, I only benefit from usually the, the sapperlings that he makes right. and then off migration. So it's not like I'm trying to play that synergy really well. I just wanted something that I could sink mana into right? if I needed it. And I think that's important in deck building, right? So let yeah. me read him. He's one green black for a 2-3 fungus legendary creature. There, I've seen some Slimefoot decks. They're pretty good, actually. Mm-hmm. Whenever a sapperling you control dies, uh, Slimefoot deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. So it has a blood artist type of effect on it, but only for sapperlings dying. But also you can pay four mana and create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Yeah. And you again, you don't tap slime foot or anything. So you, as many times as you have four mana, you can make a sapperling. This is, like you said, a good way if you end up with a ton of mana or mana you can't use, you can start making sapperlings. It's not the most efficient thing, but it's better than just wasting the mana. And again, you know, if you've got a, opponents that are at low life it does and a something. sack outlet, yeah. you might be able to just get the last four damage this way or something. And like, it works with like growing rights. Mm-hmm. Hit Lamont, right? Like that's in my deck. And that just gives me, it kind of fuels, they work together. Right. So it's like slime foot gives me creatures to flip it. And then it lets me spend mana to make more creatures. And which makes it tap for even more mana. And yeah. you can get in the snowball effect where like I'm yeah. tapping for 27 control, and I'm like, making, I mean, six it's dudes. easy to break up. Like he's a two, three, he's not invincible, right. but it's still something that I like decks that say you need to deal with this. Even if it's just a 2-3, you need to waste some mana 
mm-hmm. otherwise stop me it'll sort of I'm run doing. away with yeah. it it's grindy i like it this yeah. next one is uh quicker to yeah. do its thing it's so good in commander it's ridiculous in commander yeah. it's yeah if do you think it's, is it too expensive like it's a little expensive a but i think for what it does because well let's read it okay so tender shoot dryad is four and a green for a creature dryad mm-hmm. and it has a scent so if you control 10 or more permanents, uh, you get the city's blessing for the rest of the game. At the beginning of each upkeep, each upkeep, mm-hmm. create a 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature token. Mm-hmm. Sapperlings you control get plus 2, plus 2 as long as you have the city's blessing. And it's a 2-2 two, two itself. So, But it doesn't buff itself or anything. Right. So let's consider this. You've got 5 mana out. Let's yeah. say all you've got is 5 mana. Yeah. You pay, play Tender Shoot Dryad. Mm-hmm. That's your 6 permanent. Uh, you pass the turn to Jimmy, it makes a sapling. That's yeah. your seventh. Goes to Josh's turn. Eight. That's your eighth. Goes to Mel's turn. That's your ninth. Comes back to your turn. Ten. That's ten. You have City's Blessing. Now they're all three threes, yep. the saplings. So there's not very many scenarios where Tender Shoot doesn't immediately hit the Ascend thing in Commander. Yeah. If you're only playing with three players, maybe not. But again, that's assuming you have no other permanents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I did lie saying that the only thing that Slimefoot worked with was this, but it also works with yeah. the Tender Shoot. Paying four mana to make a 3-3 three, three is a lot better than yeah. paying four mana to make a 1-1. One, one. So these two in combination. But this, this gets out of control super fast. If you make it, if it doesn't die and it comes back to your turn, Oh yeah, you're you're in really good shape in that game because they would have killed it if they could, and now you're going to make a three three on everybody's turn for mm-hmm. zero mana. Even you know what? Even if it gets killed, let's say it goes to Jimmy and yeah. he does nothing. Okay, it goes to Josh. You don't do anything, and then Mel untaps kills it. Yeah, they still spent mana. I got two one ones out of it, which helped fuel things in my deck. Yeah, it's not the it's worst, not the worst. Case scenario. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of times it's again, just, really, I just like resilient cards. Like it's just stuff I get benefit out of no matter what happens even if you kill it i got something left yeah Mm -hmm. i like that one uh you've got oh here's another planeswalker yeah oh this is a good this is the plant one you want to read this one this is nissa voice of zendikar this is the three mana nissa one green green for the three loyalty planeswalker you can plus one and make an O one one plant creature token you can negative tour put a one one counter on each creature you control and at negative seven, her ultimate, you gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of lands you control. Yeah. That part's like fine. If you get there, you'd probably do it. But her, it's the minus you're probably going to, yeah, you're yeah. probably going to plus and then minus, plus and then minus. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, there's times where she hits the board and you, just and you minus two and then you just kill somebody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because Tender Shoot Dryad was Tender out Shoot's for a couple turns. For, or Creek with Lee. Just, yeah. Well, we'll get to it. But there's other creatures that have been out for a turn or two. Or even like you cast a Zoni last turn and got 12 insects and yeah. now you put Nissa out and now they're all two twos. That's a lot. Yeah. Oops, whoops. Like, oops, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like oops, I whoops, you're you. dead. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's like emoji shrug. Like, <laughs> <I'm just> like <laughs> what do you think? I'm, what do you want me to do? Yeah. <laughs> like, I can, what do you want me to do? Not attack? Well, speaking of the Avenger of Zendi. Yeah. The big the bad chicken, boy. The chicken Zendis. Every <laughs> chicken <laughs> Zendis. <laughs> I like chicken Zendis. Yeah. All right. Everybody's favorite, 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. I feel like I've seen this on the battlefield so much recently. I think it's because of that uh, Lord Windgrace Jund Lands Matter deck. Oh. I feel like I just keep seeing Avenger of Zendikar. I'm just always about to be killed by plant tokens. (laughs) Yeah. Narrowly averted every time, but still. Okay, let's read it. Um, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, read okay. it real quick. Five green green for a five five. When enters the battlefield, you get a O one one plant for each land you control, and then it has landfall. Whenever land uh, ETBs for you, you can put a one one counter on all your plants. Yeah. So what people usually do is play this, make like seven O one one plants, and then play their land drop, and now they got seven uh, one twos. Or they play a fetch land. Yeah, and play a fetch land, like, get two. Uh-oh. Or they've saved their fetch lands for that moment, yeah. and then they go fetch land. Oh, activate my myriad landscape, evolving wilds, and put four, t- you know, counters on all my tokens. Woof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they go concordant crossroads, attack you with everything, <laughs> and then you're dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty quick way to end a yeah. game. Yeah. I mean, Avenger, if set up correctly, can just end the game. But you're really looking to just make a bunch of tokens. Yeah, I'm just looking for bodies. Yeah, I don't, I don't even care that much about the landfall, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. This deck is just like. That is a way. That's nice. If I get to untap and like I get a landfall trigger, like I'm cool. But yeah, you're not gonna turn it down. Or Nissa comes out and plus ones. But that's yeah. the main goal of the deck is just get a bunch of stuff. It's yeah. not necessarily attacking is one of the ways it can use that stuff, but it's mm-hmm. not the only way. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the last creature in the make a bunch of tokens category. Yeah, it's a uh, Creekwood Liege from uh, Lorwyn. 
or something. It's from like one of the Shadow Ma- Master sets, as far as I know. Master sets? Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's one uh, Golgari, Golgari, Golgari. So the hybrid mana cost. Four uh, mana total. Four mana total. It's a creature horror. It says other black creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Other green creatures you control get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a one, one black and green worm creature token onto the battlefield. So it so pumps what's, tokens and it makes tokens. What's black and green in a token? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Izoni makes 1-1 one, one green and black insect tokens. Yeah. And what that means is Creekwood Leech pumps those tokens plus 2 plus 2. Yeah. So it turns all of Izoni's t- tokens into 3-3s. Three three makes it a tender shoot. Right? Yeah, <laughs> except for that Izoni can bring in 12 all at once or something. Yeah. Yeah. If you've done I mean, your, this is like a tender shoot mini. Like it, it, on my upkeep, I get a 3-3. Three, three. Right. Out of this thing, so. Yeah, it's like one per rotation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good card with the Zoni. It yeah. seems, seems pretty good. Okay, so we put a bunch of stuff in our yard. We've yeah. made a bunch of tokens. And the next category is profit. Yes. So now we take advantage of all this work that we've done. Uh, you've got a couple different strategies that are basically like, all right, I did all this stuff. Now how do I win with it? Okay. So the preferred way to win is just kill everybody at the table with a blood artist effect yeah it's aristocrat style. aristocrat style so a blood artist is named after the blood artist effect is named after blood artist and blood artist is one in a black for a creature vampire uh, whenever blood artist or another creature dies target player loses one life and you gain one life so i am trying to hold on and i don't want to play blood artist early right in this deck right. you want to ideally um, because there's tutors in the deck, I can tutor for the pieces I need that I'm missing, and I want to slam a, t- a blood artist and then like a sack outlet mm-hmm. together, right, on the same turn, and then preferably probably drain one person out and just get a th- like a, whoever's the most threatening at the table, right. So like Eldritch Evolution, yeah, on a token we'll get a two drop, put blood artist into play, yeah. and that's one way to get out there. And at that point, presumably you wouldn't do it unless you have a bunch of tokens and a way to sacrifice them. And then drain somebody out. Yeah, you've got... So the other... In the deck, the other aristocrat style effects mm-hmm. are Falcon Wrath Noble, Zulaport Cutthroat, Poison Tip Archer is mm-hmm. sort of a newish one from M19. And this one's kind of cute because it's whenever another creature dies right. for Poison Tip Archer. So if somebody wraths, right. like everybody... Well, Blood Artist is that too. Yeah. It's whenever... Well, it's target player. This right. is yeah, each that's opponent. each opponent, right. So if somebody... This is like... You need to have targeted removal for this. You can't just hope, because I'll have all these tokens, right? So you want to use like a single removal spell. I'm like, cool, yeah, I'll take that trade. And like, all everybody loses. You yeah, know, like, but it's like if somebody wraths and I have poison tip and I have a bunch of tokens, I'm like, sure. Yeah, yeah everybody deal. take 20. Everyone take 20. And, yeah. yeah like, uh, Zulaport only cares about your creature specifically yeah. dying, but it also drains each opponent. Yes. Falcon Wrath Noble is basically exactly Blood Artist yeah. as far as the wording, but it just And costs, it flies. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's it costs like, more. Because it needed to fly, yeah. right? It's like, what can we, what can we do what can to we make do? this better? Give it two, make it cost two more mana and give it flying. Yeah. So, okay. I've um, got some more here. So. Here's, a, here's a card that is on the list. Where to go? I thought we pulled it. Oh, my gosh. Oh, found it. Whew. Okay. Nobody panic. Everything's under control. This is a card that I think is a little underrated in Commander. And it's ironic because it was made for a Commander set. I think because um, the blue one, Mystic Confluence, is so good. Isn't the red one really good, too? Like, yeah, the red one's it? really good in Legacy. Okay. Uh, and it's okay in Commander. But I think this one suffers from just that comparison, even though it's not as good as the blue one. But it's super flexible and gives you a lot of options. Uh, it's Wretched Confluence. It's three black black for an instant. says, choose three. And you may choose the same mode more than once. So target player draws a card and loses a life. Target creature gets negative two, negative two until end of turn, and then return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Yep. So you get to do any of those three times or two, you know, one of those things twice and the other one once, or each one of those things one time can sort of kill a creature, draw a card, get a creature from your graveyard to your hand, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> You said, you know, this with like Underrealm Lich. Yeah. It's is nine cards. Unbelievable. You look at nine cards, choose three of them, put uh, the other six in your graveyard. Yeah. Boy. That's great. That seems good. Yeah, that's real yeah. good. This card just Even by on its, its own. I think that card's good. Yeah, just by itself, it's good. You it's, could draw a couple cards and get a creature back from your graveyard or kill something and draw a card. Yeah. I think it's, it's instant good. speed. Like mm-hmm. you don't you can you can hold that and grizzly salvage in your hand, and if they don't do anything that you're worried about, either you draw a card. Like 
even this in its own. Like, yeah. they don't have to kill something with it. I just draw three and lose three life. Yeah, basically, we were saying if you had a removal spell and one of these things that fills your yard, and they're both instant speed, and you're waiting to see if you need the removal spell, and if they don't, then you do the other thing. That card has it all at one. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. And so, then uh, also payoffs are cards like Butcher of Malakir, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, it's five black black for a five four flyer. It's a creature vampire warrior. Mm-hmm. Whenever Butcher of Malakir or another creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And then the companion to this is Dictate of Erebos, which is also in the deck, which is an enchantment, three black black with flash. And it says the same thing. Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Mm -hmm. So now you're using your tokens. You're basically sacrificing your tokens to make them sacrifice creatures. Presumably you have way more creatures than they do. Yes. And now you just... These are the kind of cards that like Voltron decks or decks that rely on a few powerful creatures just cannot beat. No. Because they can never stick anything on the board. Yeah. yeah. It's like I want to put a lock on the game after I built this board state and I get to the point where people don't want to attack me because I've just got so much going on. Um, I want to wait and then either like swing out at somebody or wait for a wrath or something somebody drops a wrath and i just dictate in response it's like all right i mean depends on the wrath because a lot of times that's killing all the creatures already yeah that's true but if it's like a small one or something like that yeah i like the or flash even- flash on dictate is actually really underrated because it's the type of card that when it hits the table people are gonna have to f- do something about and mm-hmm. it costs enough mana that sometimes like is only for instance costs a green and a black to sacrifice a creature. And if that's your sacrifice outlet, you might only be able to have like one on board sack. Yes. But if you flash and dictate on your instep, now you untap. No. And now yeah. I have all my man available for a zoni to sacrifice creatures, draw cards, make it real sacrifice creatures. Yeah. And that's a much bigger threat. So I like the flash on it a lot. Well, I like it too, because I put two other sack outlets in the deck that are just no cost. Mm-hmm. Um, so first I've got Viral's the scar striped. I mentioned before, he's one black green for a two, two. And he's a legendary creature, Troll Warrior. And he reads, each creature card in my graveyard has Scavenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Scavenge cost is equal to its mana cost. And Scavenge means when it's a creature card in the graveyard, um, you can exile this creature from your graveyard. um, And you put a number of plus one, plus one counters on, sorry. Target creature. Yeah, target creature equal to the card's power. So let's say you have a 2-2 in your yard and it costs two mana. If Rawls is out, you pay two mana. Exile that 2-2 two, two from your yard and put two plus one plus one counters onto target creature. Yeah. It basically turns your creatures in your yard into pump spells. Yeah. Uh, or like... Well, it's sorcery. You can only do it sorcery. Yeah, speed, yeah, so. yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's not tricks. It's like yeah. enchantments. Yeah. But I mean, like, you'd think that it's counterproductive to... Or counterintuitive to what I want to do with the Zoni. But I mean, in a perfect world, I can't... Sometimes I'm not going to have the chance to like re recast like maybe his only cost 12 mana at this point you right know? and i don't want to recast her now or I have maybe all these you've creatures. got like 28 creatures and you know yeah, 20 yeah. creatures in there and there's not a big difference between 19 and 20 so yeah. you're just gonna pump the thing for some other effect i think you probably wouldn't play overalls except for the second ability yeah it sort of puts it over the top like just the scavenge thing is it's not like fine enough. yeah that's but not that's what I'm... that's kind of the gravy almost of the card right yeah. so the second ability the second ability reads sacrifice another creature regenerate overalls scar striped so, yes, you can sacrifice it to regenerate Varals. You can also just sacrifice the creature because you want to sacrifice creatures, and you don't Varals isn't dying or anything, but that's a way to sacrifice creatures. Yeah. So, when Blood Artist, Falconrath Noble, Poison Tip Archer, or Zulbar Cutthroat are out, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden, yeah, that's like that gives me a free way to sacrifice myself or Dictate of Erebos. Yeah, and it gives me an ability just to like lock my opponents out of the game. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to play magic anymore. That's it. I'm sorry. Like, hey, only if they got creatures, man. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I guess the creatureless decks. But I mean, like, this is the thing I was saying earlier where I want to have, like, I'm not scared to, like, put something like Varals on the board and then make all this stuff and then wait until my opponents are, like, kind of shields down or something. And then I slam Blood Artist and I'm like, duk, 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 or even slam Poison Tip Archer, which is even better. And just. Do, 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 start sacrificing all these creatures and then everyone's like wow we just lost like 10 life like, yeah all of us yeah yeah pretty cool well you can also have multiple of the aristocrat stuff out so if you got zulaport and poison tip archer yeah. or something then and, i mean then they're pretty cheap especially like zulaport and Varals on the same turn is not like it's hard not, to do yeah, yeah it's possible i mean Varals and then yeheni fills the same role as Varals. um yeheni's a two and a black for a two two and yes haste they, they have, have haste, haste sorry yeah. they have haste uh, whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, 
put a plus one plus one counter on Yeheni, uh, and then I can sacrifice another creature. Yeheni gains indestructible. I like that one a lot because it protects itself. So does the regenerate, but yeah. indestructible is a little better than regenerate in general. Yeah, yeah I like that. Okay, um, what's another cool interaction you have? Well, or sorry, a way to profit. And I think you don't want to forget that one of the categories in this deck is make a bunch of tokens. Yeah. One of the ways to profit from having a bunch of tokens is to bash people in the face with said tokens. What's the best way to bash people in the face with tokens? You hoof them. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, like I had, like there's no way I could have like left this card out of this deck, right? <laughs> there's many cards that sort of fill this role. This is kind of the best of them, but you could choose between Triumph of the Hordes or Beastmaster Ascension or mm-hmm. other things. But Crater of Behemoth is the go-to. It's five green, green, green. So eight mana total for a five, five. Beast has haste when... Crater Hoof enters the battlefield. Creatures you control gain trample and plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So if you got 10 creatures, Crater Hoof will come in and make them all plus 11, plus 11 and trample. Yep. That is... Uh, that's that's the way to end of the game. I, my guess is that Crater Hoof Behemoth and Commander has probably ended as many games as any other single card. You think so? Probably yeah, more, gotten. probably more than most other cards. Like it, what, the highest percentage of yeah. ended games is like. I mean, I would like if it was that. played on Moto or Magic Online, yeah, and they because they can keep track of which cards ends games. It yeah. would probably be the top in in Commander. Do you think like top like ten percent of games? Like is that a, oh, that's a big know. number? You don't yeah. think it's ten percent? I don't know. Probably not that high. Yeah. But I'm just saying in relation to other cards. Yeah, because there are card a lot of cards that end, when they come out they end games. But this sure. one just tends to come up a lot. This needs things. This doesn't just end it on its own. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, that's sort of the main thrust of what the deck's trying to do, right? Yeah. Fill the graveyard, get a bunch of tokens. And then do some cool stuff with either some fancy dancy stuff with yeah, either just get like cute, stacking like, creatures. Like magic players like to get cute. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> or sometimes you can just pump your stuff and win that way. But, you know, one of the fun things about building a deck is that there are like these other cool little things that can happen. And you don't build your deck expecting them to, but you have these little interactions that are possible. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this one. <laughs> this, this is one you told good. me and I was like, Oh, I never even thought about it. Yeah. You have to have the what we call the nut draw, which is like you have to naturally kind of draw these cards yeah. early. Yeah. But if you get this out, this is pretty sweet. Okay, so what you want to have happen is turn two. You play, you call him Steve. I've never had anybody call Sakura him Steve. Tribe Elder. Well, yeah. S-T-E, Steve. Oh, S-T-E. Okay, I got it. Okay, yeah. yeah. So one under green for a 1-1. One, one. He's a creature snake shaman. And uh, you can sacrifice Sakura, Sakura t- Tribe Elder and search your library for a basic land card. Put that card under the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. Pretty good. Really good. Um, puts a creature in my yard, gets me a land, ramps me. Like, I mean, this is one of the top most played green cards in yeah. the format. It's probably like third or something. And I I think this card is good no matter what. This, this next set. card? Yeah. yeah but it's just it's, really good with Steve. If I go turn two Steve into turn three Journey to Eternity, yeah. <laughs> it's one black green for a legendary enchantment aura. It says enchant creature you control. When enchanted creature dies, return it to the battlefield under my control. Then return Journey to Eternity to the battlefield transformed under my control. So Journey to Eternity flips over. Steve comes back out. Yeah. And Journey to Eternity is uh, Atzal, Cave of Eternity, which is a legendary land that taps for one mana of any color. So yeah. think of the amount of ramp you had there. You sacrificed Steve. Mm-hmm. That got you a land. But then Steve came back in, and this turned into a land. So you're already two lands up, and then Steve can be sacked again. So you're three lands up. Yeah. And I can bring back Steve. Yeah, and then that. so what What Atzal's activated ability is you pay three black green and then tap Atzal and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you can stack Steve again, and now you've got five mana and Atzal. And the next turn, you could bring Steve back out onto the battlefield. Yeah, and sack him again. That is insanity. Yeah, right? That is a crazy combo. Yeah. I want to do that. I want to do that too. <laughs> like real bad. I want my opponents to be like, oh no. What is going on? Yeah. And it's not like you can't, it's hard to interact with too, right? Like right. the only time you have to interact with it and normally commander games, like people aren't holding up mana on turn. Like if I'm going first right. and it's my turn three, people have two mana left. Like usually. They don't generally. just sit there holding it with answers. Generally. Yeah. yeah. Generally. So there's that moment when you go to enchant. Steve, yeah, and they can try to remove Steve. Even in that case, I still you can you can sack Steve, and you got one for one. You lost the journey to eternity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay, 
No word yet on whether that's going to happen in game nights, but I hope it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> hey, listen, you're my you opponent. To... <laughs> you're my opponent in that game. Sorry, man. You don't want to be the receiving end of this? Uh, it's cool, and I want to see it happen, but I want to see it happen for you when you're playing someone else. Okay, that's fair. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, respect your decision. <laughs> uh, here's another cool interaction that's in the deck. And I, yeah. again, I, you know, this is something that when you talk about it, I'm like, oh, yeah. But I've, I have I never really thought about okay. Court of Calling. So, yeah, since I'm going to have so many tokens, right? Um, I put Court of Calling in my deck. Yeah. Because I have, um, like, Blood Artists that I can tutor for, Sack Outlets I, could, I have to tutor for. But also, um, I can find other things. Right. And Court of Calling reads, it's X, green, green, green. It's an instant. It's important. <laughs> it has convoke. Very important too. Yeah. Convoke. So you, yeah, go, oh, ahead. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You can tap your creatures to add mana for the X or or the green if they're green creatures in yes. the spell. Yeah. So search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it on the battlefield, then shuffle my library. So you tutor for a creature into play. Yes. And then that's obviously very good, right? Crater yeah. Hoof, like you said, yeah. Blood Artist. But we all think of those uses for it, but you have a card in here that that's very popular. She's a lot of play, but getting it with Court of Calling to let me rewind. One of the things about token decks that sort of make them vulnerable mm-hmm. is they have to commit a lot to the board. Yeah, and so we always want ways in our decks to, or in our token decks specifically, to protect our board state from wraths and things like that. And so this is a really interesting way to protect you. Because what would you go get with Court of Calling, let's say, if I was like Wrath of God? Wrath of God? I would Court of Calling for five. Mm -hmm. So that's eight mana. It's a lot. Well, if you have a couple of untapped creatures, it could be way less than five. It's true. But I mean, the same five. I'm committing, you know, maybe five creatures and three lands. Not bad. bad. So I would grab Sidisi Undead Vizier, Mm -hmm. who is a three black black for a four six death touch, who has Exploit. So exploit reads, when this creature enters the battlefield, I may sacrifice a, cre- a creature. And when Sidisi Undead Vizier exploits a creature, you may search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. So she demonic tutors. Yeah. And I would grab heroic intervention. Right. So heroic intervention reads. Uh, it's uh, one and a green for an instant. Uh, permanence you control, gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. And now my wrath of God destroys nothing. Yep. And all you did was have to sacrifice a creature. CDC can't even sacrifice herself mm-hmm. if you need to. Although if she's your only creature, you probably aren't worried about protecting your board and probably aren't doing this. Yeah. Uh, there's another one. Though. There's, another, there's one. another one. Yeah. This is my favorite one. This, this is another is one. What I always want to do with this deck. <laughs> These three cards in conjunction. So this is a little more offensive minded. It's not yeah. quite saving. Well, your no, board. It, it saves my board. Well, I mean, it doesn't save the tokens, but... Well, it's not saving it, your it board. It gives me everything. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, offensive-minded. Yeah. This is yeah. like, I'm going to turn that board wipe into something that was really bad for you. <laughs> yeah. So this is a new card from Battle Bond. Yeah. Yeah. I man. think it's great. I, I think this is a very good card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. in this instance. So in this instance, you would... Okay, here we go. Thrilling Encore. Four yeah. and a black for an instant. Put onto the battlefield under your control all creature cards in all graveyards that were put there from the battlefield this turn. So somebody wipes... You Court of Calling for Sidisi, get Thrilling Encore, cast it. Yeah. Because, again, Sidisi can sacrifice herself, yep. cast it, and now everything that died that turn to that Wrath mm-hmm. is on the battlefield on your side. Yep. Including your opponent's stuff. Yep. It also, also, if I have this in my hand, and I end of turn, end of someone's, the turn before me flash in Dictate of Erebos. Oh, yeah. Sacrifice, and then... Sack all sac- your stuff. Sack all my stuff. If I have enough mana. But, right. I mean, like, I would, ideally, I'd probably untap. Right. And then I would sack all my stuff and make then, everyone sack all their creatures. And then be like, I and then I'd thrill an encore, I get all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, I want to do that too. Yeah. I want to do that too. Yeah. I want to do all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seems seems pretty cool. There's some, Yeah, there's some cards in here that you chose to put in I, that were, you know, I thought really smart. Yeah. And I love this card so much. Yeah. And it's perfect in this get deck. So it's, I'm always reiterating this to our audience, this type of thought process. So, Adam has Thrashing Brontodon in his deck, which is one green green for a dino. That it's a 3-4. Mm-hmm. And you pay one and sacrifice it and destroy target artifact or enchantment. Yep. Now, it's very easy to just put all the usual suspects into your deck as far as like, you know, I don't know, Acidic Slimes and Abrupt Reclamation decay. Sage. Yeah, yeah, Abrupt Decays and stuff like that. But Adam's going, well, 
can I get that effect on something that synergizes with something I'm already doing? So now Brontodon is a creature that's going to destroy an enchantment but go to your graveyard. Yeah. And you want creatures in your graveyard because of Azoni. So this, you get your single targeted removal artifact enchantment stuff on a body that goes to the graveyard, can be reanimated because yeah. you've got a lot of stuff like that. And it's just way more synergistic than just putting in a sorcery or something that would do that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that thought like process it. a lot. Yeah. I think I would just, even just me as a player, I would put a card like this, even if I wasn't worrying about cards in my, or creature cards in my graveyard. Mm-hmm. Just because, like, a three mana, three, four is a real good rate. It blocks a lot of stuff. It stops any early aggression, and then it just pays off later. Because enchantments are like, they, I don't, okay, so they feel like the strongest thing, or one of the strongest things you can do in Commander. They are. They're, they're, they're the hardest like, to remove. The hardest to remove. Yeah. And having that attached to a creature that yeah. I can just attack and block with like i can still kill somebody with this thing <laughs> you know you can't really kill someone with a rex age like you can but a two ones it's tough yeah. yeah i mean but if you're in a blink deck then you want the rex age yeah because it can't blink a thrashing bronze true yeah. so it's just like tailoring your choice of how you have those effects like everybody wants something that can destroy artifacts and enchantments yeah but it's you know i got instants i got sorceries i got you know creatures i got you know whatever that can do that and so it's just making sure that you choose the right type of effects that synergize with everything else that you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to wrap up here, but we wanted to highlight some of the new cards from Guilds of Ravna that, Ravnica that you chose to put into this deck. Yes. Uh, what, this first one is... This first one is... Oof. It Every Golgari deck ever plays this card now. This is mm. probably the best Golgari card in Commander. It feel, Like, every time I read it, I'm like, this feels wrong. Like, what text am I missing? I must yeah. be missing a downside or something. Yeah. So it's it's a path to decay, path to abrupt decay. I don't know. Yeah. Assassin's Trophy, black and a green for an instant. Destroy target permanent in opponent controls. Target permanent. Anything. Um, and then its controller may search their library for a basic land, put it onto battlefield, then shuffle their library. So it's path to exile, but it doesn't exile, but it can get any target permanent. It destroys it. This is this card's amazing yeah gets answers a, anything flip journey to eternity yeah it's, <laughs> it's answered gets a yeah it gets yeah. a land it gets an enchantment gets an artifact planeswalker creature the only thing it can't deal with i guess is indestructible stuff yeah but that there, seems i guess that's the downside the unwritten yeah. downside it's, it's like two Whoa. mana yeah. <laughs> like what the heck <laughs> yeah yeah that card is ridiculous and it's instant too like it's not even a sort you'd yeah. think like oh sorcery okay no they just pushed it in every category yeah. Yeah, that that card is really good. Get yeah. your hands on as many of those as you can. Yeah, that card's that's gonna, gonna be playable. In that's a modern lot. legacy, everything, yeah, right? It's everything. Yeah, I think. maybe not legacy. Yeah, don't talk about legacy, Josh. You don't know anything about it. Okay. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Yeah. Of the new cards, you I like this it? card a lot, and I really want to see how it performs. Yeah. Like, did you kind of put it in as almost an experiment? Yeah, because it's like well, maybe it's the same thought process as the Thrashing Brontodon. Right. Because it's uh, Crawl Harpooner. Okay. It's one in a green for a 3-2 reach. Okay. I would play that. I mean, this is the drafter in me coming out. You so. wouldn't play that in Commander, yeah, no. you wouldn't play that in Commander. <laughs> uh, it has Undergrowth. Uh, when Crawl Harpooner enters the battlefield, choose up to one target creature with flying you don't control. Crawl Harpooner gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Then you may have Crawl Harpooner fight that creature. So it's a removal spell for a flyer on a creature. I mean, and, this deck is weak to flyers. Yeah. And it might fight it and die and then go to your graveyard too. And yeah. yeah. And you're already filling your grave with creatures on purpose. That's what I'm figuring yeah. will happen. Is it's just going to enter. It's going to, you know, even if I only have one creature, like it kills a four toughness flyer mm-hmm. and then goes to the graveyard and then Azoni has something and mm-hmm. there you go. Yeah. Maybe I just pick off like a Thopter, you know? Yeah. Pick true. off a Thopter and then just Swing. attack for six It has to have something. haste, but yeah. 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 Well, it has to have haste, <laughs> but... Uh, this next card is going in a lot of green decks. Yeah. It's Beast Whisperer. You have two whispers. I got two whispers. You have a Doom mm-hmm. and a Beast Whisperer. No, right. no, no dog whisperer. <laughs> cat whisperer. <laughs> it's two green green for a 2-3 Elf Druid. It says, very simple, whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. Horse Whisperer. That's <laughs> I couldn't think of that. It's like, what animal is the Whisperer? It's not the dog or the cat. Yeah, is that Matt? That's Matt Damon, right? Or yeah. he's in that movie? He's in that movie. Yeah, Sorry. Okay. okay so right. This is whenever you cast a creature, spell, draw a card. How many creatures are in this deck? Like 33. Okay. I counted before. Yeah, I, yeah when I was yeah. like deciding um, 
Which new cards to put in? Yeah. I was like, I counted. I was like, oh, how many creatures? Do I, seems good. Yeah, when you're like, do I put this in or not? Yeah. I think anything over like 26 or 27, you probably can play this yeah. card. And there's a lot of decks in the format that play green and have 26 or more creatures. Yeah. This card is just value. It's you, just don't, good. you don't even have to pay any mana. It's yeah, just, it just happens. Just half of Zendikar Resurgent. Yeah. This is sweet. I'm excited to play that card in a lot of decks myself. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's your deck, Adam. Yeah. Uh, let me just wish you good luck on the upcoming game nights. Thanks. Yeah, no yeah. problem. I'm I mean, a... good luck, but not the best luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, uh... not Josh Lee Kwai luck. No, 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 no. Not Josh Lee Kwai luck. <laughs> I don't think anybody has that kind of luck, do they? <laughs> is that, well, is certainly that a Jimmy barometer? Does it, yeah, so Jimmy does. Draw not. land, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It depends uh, who you ask. Huh? It depends, depends who you on ask. You, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> Luck is in the eye of the beholder. That's right? right. I'd rather be lucky than good. That is the thing. In my I say experience, there's no such day. thing as luck. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I'm trying to think of other luck quotes. Oh, um That's it. That was the only one. Winners write the history is a big one for me. Because <laughs> it's like it, you're not lucky, you were good. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I, I won, so I get to write the history <laughs> of that game. <laughs> I'm gonna be the one telling the story. I happen to like that quote myself. Yeah. Okay, to the listeners. What new commander from Guilds of Ravnica are you the most excited about building around? Yeah. Yeah, I really want to hear, you know, which... There's a bunch, and there's, you know, a couple of them from each guild, or maybe a one or two guilds only has one, but still mm-hmm. a bunch of cool stuff to choose from. Which one do you think is the most exciting? We'd love to hear from you. And if you like this deck that Adam has laid out today, yep. you should go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone to order these singles uh, and other accoutrement to go along with it if you use that affiliate link when you order that stuff you really are supporting game nights this show and all of our content and if you're going to build a golgari deck you should probably get golgari sleeves there's also is it rakdos azorius all the guilds ultra pro has these i don't know why it took so long to come out with sleeves that were so simple they just have the guild symbol on it in the colors that's all i want i don't need like a bunch of i don't need yeah exactly this is awesome and you don't even have to build a golgari deck around the new Golgari commander. You could build a Marin deck and still want to have it. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty sweet. So, and again- it's a little bit of extra identity for your deck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And again, they are the new Eclipse technology, so much more durable than printed sleeves in the past. Highly recommend checking those out. Supporting Ultra Pro, again, supports this show. All of, right. Of course, like you also mentioned, like if you go and buy this version of this deck, which I would be very flattered if you just straight copied this deck, but also if you want to make some changes, I would like to see what you would have done. It'd oh, be interesting. That's another to the listeners. If you can think of any upgrades or changes yeah. to the deck, we're going to have the uh, deck list in the show notes. Go ahead and shout out to Adam. Although at the time he's hearing it, it will be too late for it to yeah, help him it'll be too in late. the game night but showdown. I, I think I might be going forward like with this. Yeah, like this deck and try to tune it, and tune it up, and then it. so I might run into it again yeah, yeah, in yeah. the future, a more tuned version. <laughs> yeah, you'll after find. I crush it on game nights, which it'll I assume like is what from, will happen. It'll be from like this is the Doesn't human, this is the human RoboCop version of oh. the deck, and you're gonna run into the RoboCop. Drop RoboCop. it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, that's scary. Actually, <laughs> yeah. So watch out. <laughs> okay, for the RoboCop, RoboCop version of this <laughs> this deck. All right, now it's time for the end step where we talk about something cool. Outside the world of magic, yeah, Adam, do you have something cool? I sure do. It's not funny. Magic it's funny that you mentioned world, okay? Because uh, I have been playing the World of Warcraft expansion. Oh, what's it called again? Uh, Battle for Azeroth. And you mentioned, oh no, don't. you made the mistake of mentioning that you used to play. Don't, I can't go back there, Adam. <laughs> I'm not asking you to go back, okay? Because so, I would never ask that because it's a commitment. Is it fun? Yeah. How much have you played it so far? Uh, I've leveled to max level for my one, 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 cre- one character. What I'm class? a one character what person. Class? Warlock. Warlock. Oh, yeah. I like that because I was. Yeah. A, yeah. I I have played. I have played every expansion since vanilla. Like I've been a regular. Player. Every single expansion. Yeah. Holy cow! I was a hardcore raider from, like top fifty U.S. from Cataclysm to Mists of Pandaria. Jeez. And then I burned out, as you do. As you that's do. what it takes to. You have to play an insane amount. Yeah. Um. And now I just play casually with friends. It's just sort of like fun. leveling up. And I level it. and I raid still, but it's just like once or twice a week maybe mm-hmm. if i have time i don't really have a lot of, if it turns out content creation eats up all your time yeah funny yeah. how that works <laughs> so what's yeah. what's max level now 120 holy when crap. is the last time you played uh i think it was it was uh wrath of the lich king so 80 so it was 80 yeah, yeah. Except I had a full list of eighty level eighty characters. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I played a lot too. I only ever have one max level character. Oh no, that's all I, I can have handle. It literally every class I've got, I had to max level at that point. But that was forty levels. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. That actually tempers my desire to play again because I'm like forty levels, nothing. Well, okay. So don't. Oh, here we go. John, I know what Josh, you're gonna say. 
<laughs> Josh mentioned a couple things to me, and I really wanted to bring them up on the podcast because I think it's hilarious. Here we go. First of all, what did you play before World of Warcraft, Josh? EverQuest. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Josh loves EverQuest, man. Dude, it's EverQuest awesome. was the best game that's video full game. stop he's like full stop yeah it's the well it's definitely the best mmo that's ever been created there were problems yeah. with it but yeah ah. is that nostalgia speaking though no it's just because it was you like hard games yeah it's you true. like hard mode yeah from everything you've told me i'm like everquest yeah, was the awesome. hardest game ever <laughs> it was so punishing can you tell me the story that you told me today which one's that the the gold the copper story <laughs> please because i think it's the best thing ever <laughs> this is supposed to be your end stuff okay i know it doesn't matter okay so I played on a PvP server in EverQuest. Yeah. It was, um, it's hard to go into it. EverQuest was very punishing. So at various points in the game, especially when it first started, PvP yeah. was totally open-ended. Like if I killed another player, I could take everything on that player, all their items. Yeah. And they lost XP when they died. <laughs> so b- <laughs> Sorry to swear, but <laughs> oh, we can beat that out. It's uh, fine. Okay, that sucks, <laughs> dude. Like, are you kidding me? Well, in EverQuest, uh, as long as I played it, you would lose XP if you died to mobs, but not to other players. After a while, they they learned like, oh, that's not very fun. Yeah. Um, and then after a while, they made it so you couldn't loot items off of uh, other players. Yeah. You could only loot the whatever money they had on them. And so in EverQuest, there was three different kinds of sort of um, currency. It was copper, silver, gold, and platinum. <laughs> and each character had a weight limit of what they could hold. Depending on the class and the race, you could carry more or less stuff. Like if you're a dark elf, you can't carry very much. And if you're an ogre, you can carry a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so this is a PVP server, but it was team PVP. So the people, like if you were a gnome, other gnomes couldn't attack each other, but you could attack, again, dark elves or something. So we would do this little gambit. (laughs) We had a little ambush that we used to play, which is we would get one character it's so like a, a high level character, but not max level. Yeah. It, we would make one juicy target. Yeah. And it would be one of the speed classes, like a bard or a druid, somebody that could make themselves run faster. And they would, the way that the PvP server ended up sort of breaking down is that there would be zones that would be controlled by specific you know, teams, we yeah. called them, but it was like the dark, you know, the e- sort of quote unquote evil races would their have home. like yeah. near their zones and their homes, they would have control of it and if you went in there you could expect there's a lot of enemy pvpers that were going to try and kill you and we had our territories so we'd go to sort of one of the contested zones or near to their zone and we'd send one person across <laughs> into the zone but we'd all be speaking on ventrilo which is the team speak of the time our old old school. Old, old man is speaking right yeah now. exactly <laughs> so the 10 of us or so would sit outside the zone yeah and one would go in and yeah. he would go and get the attention of some of the other players in the zone until they were chasing that player <laughs> and then they would l- proceed to lead the other player the, the the dark elves or whatever back towards the zone entrance and then we had like the specific zone and we knew the timing so that over ventrilo would be like i'm at the tree zone <laughs> and so when they get to the you know a certain point half of the players so we've got 10 or so with us five zone across yeah. and five stay on the other side so that if the dark elf runs across the zone line they run right into our team <laughs> yeah and so the five zone in, and then the person who uh, was the juicy target is actually supposed to die at this yeah. point. So they get caught. They allow themselves to get caught and die. And the dark elf or the couple of dark elves or whatever, there's usually like, say, usually you get like three or four following you and goes and loots the corpse. Yeah. Picks up all the <laughs> copper that the person had on them. So the, the juicy target was loaded up with as many copper coins as they could carry that would not slow them down. <laughs> so so it was like, you'd find out their slowdown point and then you drop one <laughs> copper and now you're at like full speed. And so when the Dark Elf it's goes- It's so smart. <laughs> it's like the most genius thing I've ever heard. So when the Dark Elf goes to loot the money, cause you just click them and then you just oh it goes ching and you just get all, ever, all the money they have on them, yeah. which happens to be 2,038 copper. Oh and then my they, God. then they like see- You know the yeah. exact number. Well, no, I just made that up. Oh, okay. But it was around that. It was, okay. you know, it was a lot. Yeah. But then they look up and they see all the five of us bearing down on them. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, oh crap. And they turn to run, but they're weighed down by the copper so they can't run away. Oh and, man. And they're frantically trying to drop it and they're, the fireballs are already in the air. Yeah. Yeah. And they just get 
burned down. That was our smart ambush technique. God, that's the best. <laughs> oh my god. I'll give a quick story just because I'll even out the okay. like. Yeah. So I have a really my most embarrassing MMO story. <laughs> you I told, told me you this, this one. one. Oh, this is pretty bad. <laughs> so Adam Savadan, he is a. Uh, it's Wrath of the Lich King, so Josh can relate. And it's uh, the next Ramus raid. Yeah. And that's the only raid that's out at the moment that was available. That was the top tier raid. That was the top tier raid at the moment. Um, uh, the there was going to be a new patch incoming, but there was an achievement you could get out of Nocturamus, a uh, 25-player raid. It was only available, though, until the next patch came out. Yeah. Because they was, were going to basically buff characters and make it too easy to make the achievement. So yeah, this yeah, was the yeah. last time. Because gear levels would go up, yeah. and then it would be easier to go back and get this achievement. And the achievement was nobody in your raid dies for the entire clear of the raid to the end boss. What was it called? Uh, Immortal. Okay. And you got a title for it, which was okay. a big deal. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this was a big deal. This is when titles were like, you would show, like when you saw somebody with the immortal title, you're like, wow, they're a big deal. <laughs> so for whatever reason, don't ask me. But World of Warcraft was yeah, popular, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. People thought this way. It still is popular. still is popular. Um, and the week before, we were on Kel'Thuzad, which is the last boss, and someone died. And I was, a tra- I was an app at this guild at the moment. Which means you're like a... I was like a trainee. I was an intern. You're a pledge. Yeah, I'm a pledge. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm brand new to this guild. My la- my first week was actually that last week. And we f- and I didn't screw up, so I was like, Phew, okay, whew, we did it. And uh, I didn't die. I mean everyone's it's not my mad. Fault. Yeah, it's not my fault. Whatever. <laughs> Don't look at the new guy. <laughs> and so the next week comes. And I'm like, all right, I'm this ready for this. This is the last week this before the, the last, match. Yeah, the, the last, last week chance. before the, the last chance that my guild, any guild can do this. And my guild really wants to do this. And uh, I even remember the name of guild. I wonder if, yeah, I could probably shout it out. It was actually a Penny Arcade uh, guild. Oh, what's it called? Uh, it was called Fear Engine. Okay. If anybody's listening and you were in Fear Engine. Penny Arcade is our fulfillment company for like our playmats and stuff. Oh, really? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So PA on Dark Iron Alliance had a bunch of guilds because uh, Tycho or somebody started playing. And everyone's uh-huh. like, everyone's coming. To... So I joined. Um, so yeah, Fear Engine on Dark Iron Alliance. Uh, we go into Nuxramus and we get to Thaddeus. And Thaddeus is a boss that makes the, the raid switch sides depending on a buff yeah. they get or a debuff for positive and negative charges. And if you stand, if you're a negative charge and you stand with the positive charge people, you kill yourself and everyone around you. It kind of like puts a symbol near you, but yeah, it, yeah. there's a ton of people, so it's hard to figure out. So you're but constantly paying your... attention and it switches and you're like, oh crap, I got to run over here. So <laughs> I died on Thaddeus. <laughs> you got mixed up in I the charges? I got mixed up with the charges and I screwed it up because my DB, my deadly boss, there's a mod that kind of helped you out yeah. with this stuff and that mod for some reason didn't load when i walked into the instance and i didn't notice i'd done like four bosses and i just didn't notice it hadn't loaded in well you need it for that one and you need it for that one yeah. if you're you're if you're an idiot like me <laughs> and you need someone to hold your hand <laughs> so i died on thaddeus and it was the quietest raid i've ever been a part of from that point on everyone just goes everyone just went silent and i never showed my face there ever again that was it that was it man i was like all right i messaged the officers i paid them the due for screwing up because there there was a like 800 gold it was like 800 gold which was a Penance, lot at the time yeah. yeah well for some people 800 yeah <laughs> 800 gold. For me, 800 gold, and it was like the the highest uh, capacity bag yeah. was on top of that. So you had to give yeah. them both. And I said, I'm sorry. And they were actually super chill about it. Like the officers, like everyone else in the raid was real mad. But the officers were like, you screwed up. That's okay. We'll move on. And that's it. But no, nah, 23-year-old Adam or whatever I was, was like, at the I'm, time, I'm, I was like, I'm moving to another town and changing later. my name. Pulled, yeah, pulled parachute, <laughs> man. And I got out of there. I pulled the parachute and actually silverware came out. And I was like, oh, no, I'm dead. Yeah. So, and this was at a time before cross route. So people knew your name. Yeah. And I was really worried that word would get out. There. And they would just trash you, but they didn't. I was, what was my character's name? Do you ever run into any people from Penny Arcade? No, I don't. Because we're near that world. Like, oh, like the PA people? Yeah, but I don't think anybody from act- actually this was use a your real name. This, or, no, this was like uh, a splinter guild of Penny. This was like the, the hardcore rating part of the Penny Arcade gotcha, guild gotcha. faction kind of thing. So it thing. wasn't like everybody worked at Penny Arcade. It yeah, was like no, friends no. of friends of friends. Yeah, it was, or six just degrees community of members. Bacon. Not even, not even community, like just community members. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, just fans. Okay. That's all. Gotcha. But that's oh, my gotcha. most embarrassing wow story. That's pretty good. I screwed up. That's pretty good. I've had weapons break during like heroic pulls. Like, my weapon breaks, and I'm too embarrassed to say anything. So, do you have a backup? Nope. <laughs> this was during Cataclysm. Yeah. I, I was doing, we were doing a heroic boss, which was the highest uh, tier level, and my weapon broke. So, what you do? Didn't say a word. Just let it ride, man. And people were like, no, we're no, a warlock. no, I was a warrior at the time. 
<laughs> my weapon broke. So like people, and, but like from pull to pull, no one's gonna notice one pull where you don't do any damage. You're right. But, but on that one pull, someone's like, like, no, it was one pull because I repaired afterwards. Oh, gotcha. But yeah. that one pull, I do like, you know, I'm bottom of the damage where I'm usually near the top. And it's like humble brags, I guess. Yeah, I'm usually near the top. No big deal. But like, and then that one time it's someone happened is like, what happened to your damage? I was like, I don't know, man. I just, that was weird. I just weird. Yeah, I was, was pressing weird. all my buttons. Game yeah. bugged out. Yeah. <laughs> just, must be, like, yeah. must, it, just blame it on lag every yeah. time. Oh, I get got really laggy. I was like, the sun was in my eyes. I don't know what happened. <laughs> man, my controller broke. Uh, you're making me want to play. Stop it. Stop okay. talking about it. Sorry. Stop talking about it. Stop talking Sorry. about it. Okay. Something else I'm going to talk about that you should check out yeah. is our sister podcast, The Masters of Modern. Alex Kessler, Ben Bateman, they talk about the modern format and all things competitive magic. You can find them on Twitter at the MMCast. And you find their show right next to us at collected.company. Also, they're beginning to do video versions of their podcast. So if you tap, tap, if you type Masters of Modern into the uh, search bar on YouTube, you will find them. And uh, then you can see them as you're watching them. They, yeah. They're not as good looking as us, nope. but yeah, not or at least close. as Adam. I don't even. I've never I don't even know. Seen That's them. a lie. That That's a like. lie. Ben's pretty good looking. I think you're good looking, Josh. Yeah. Okay. I don't That's wear a suit. Even... I don't wear a suit. So you don't even wear a suit to be good looking. I, I'm not good at taking compliments, Adam. Stop okay. talking about it. All Jeez. Right. All right. All right. It's done. <laughs> Our editor is Josh Murphy. We call him Murph. Yeah. Drop it. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> we really do call him Murph. <laughs> It just, Whoa. it just, uh, doo -doo, boom. Hey, you can't say those words. Yeah, sorry, sorry. You got me. You just, I did not expect, oh, jeez. Do you ever walk up to him like, nin, 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 Terry, Terry is a huge Robocop fan, so he, he mentions it quite often. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> uh, special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer for the living card animations that open and close all of our shows and are behind us on these windows. Jeffrey does awesome work. And Adam, yep. one more time. How can everybody find you out there okay. on the worldwide interwebs? The worldwide inter I have Twitter. It's okay. at Wake Up Super. Wake Up Super. Yeah, it's okay. a fighting game reference. Yep. And then uh, I have a Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash cbats. Every morning, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till about 1 p.m. Pacific all, Standard Time. I am sometimes in there hanging out or lurking. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to come say hi to me also and watch Adam, of course. And also I, I would be mistaken to forget plugging Loading Ready Run, who give me the opportunities that I have like being here right now. Um, so Loading Ready Run, you can find them at twitch.tv slash Loading Ready Run. They do stuff every day as well. Yep. And uh, we also do the pre-pre releases for Magic the Gathering. We do Friday nights, the show. Um, and yeah, they do a bunch of stuff. A ton of, a ton of a stuff. Ton I can't of even name it and Yeah, they've got a new show called Road Quest that they're working on. Yeah, I, I, I was there. i a pilot for it. That's on their yeah. channel as I'm well. I'm working on editing it. Yeah. Seems like a ton of work. It's like game nights level of um, undertaking. Yeah. So. But we have a much bigger staff. <laughs> Humble break. Yeah, I wish I had a much no, bigger staff. No, I'm just saying that. I'm yeah, just no, I wasn't. I didn't mean to sound like that. You, you do a lot for what you have. Like the, the undertaking of game nights. Like now that. The like, stupid is the word you're looking for. It's yeah. stupid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I should have more people, but we don't. But, um, well, hopefully. The show turns out well. Game nights, I mean, with Adam on it. And yes. by well, I mean I win. Yeah. You're too nice. You're supposed to talk, I'm supposed trash, to talk trash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, I just hope we all have a good game and <laughs> smile and be friends. And that's why we invite Adam to come <laughs> yeah. to game nights, everybody. Make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be coming out very soon. He will be playing this Azoni deck. Until yeah. then, thanks, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Peace. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs> <laughs>